childhood, the time of wide-eyed innocence, where the possibilities of the whole world lay before you, and your dreams seem exceptionally bright, and the monsters in the dark seem unspeakably real. And in the world of horror movies, sometimes the monsters of childhood are more than just creatures lurking under the bed or hiding in the closet. Sometimes they are other children. Today on Gamma Ray, we're going to examine a long-standing, terrifying trope, killer kids. I'm here. For as long as tales of horror have existed, there's been the notion of children not only falling prey to the creatures of the night, but becoming the predators themselves. When it comes to children falling prey to malevolent forces, the message is less for the children and more for those watching them. Fairy tales and urban legends alike have often visited dark fates on unsuspecting youth as an ominous warning to those charged with their safety. Urban legends like the phone call coming from inside the house or the notorious baby in the oven tale are meant to scare people, usually parents, into keeping a watchful eye on their children. These tales often have a grisly and tragic outcome, assured to shock those in positions of guardianship to the core. In these cases, the tragedy of the horror is used as a mechanism for social commentary and a warning to take responsibility and protect the people of tomorrow. To this end, the trope of children in horror persists because the loss of such innocence is the truest tragedy, and by definition, the purest horror. That's why the social commentary of those themes resonates so strongly in these stories, even today. But what about when the children themselves are the monsters? You know the type. Seemingly sweet, apparently innocent, yet there's something not quite right. It's all for you! The innocent are innocent no longer. And the very people we instinctively want to protect are the ones we come to fear the most. In both literature and life, childhood is symbolically a time of innocence. By inverting and making children the villain, horror essentially offers a perversion of the very thing we equate with goodness. Some horror scholars contend that the persistence of killer kids and pint-sized perils remains such a genre staple simply because of their never-ending ability to unnerve. In comparison to other time-honored monsters such as Dracula, Freddy, or the Wolfman, the notion of creepy children is so effective because it hits a little bit too close to home. While the aforementioned monsters exist in a perpetual state of otherness due to their supernatural origins, there's something compellingly simple and unnerving about horror kids, if for no other reason than because we were all once children ourselves. It's this unsettling connection to our own humanity and how easily it can be distorted that makes killer kids so fascinating. On the whole, kids should seem like far less threatening villains than a hulking werewolf or Godzilla, but some critics contend that it's their diminutive state that fully cements how truly terrifying they can be. What these mini monsters lack in physicality, they make up for in simply being. By taking what we know about childhood and turning it on its head, evil children represent a profound unnaturalness that intends to leave the audience chilled. And with that being said, subversion of the natural order is what horror is all about and no idea communicates that quite as effectively as the corruption of the one moment in life we hold the most sacrosanct. This corruption is a key element of the trope's ultimate effectiveness as a mechanism of terror, beyond merely seeing that which we consider the embodiment of good turned evil. The notion of wicked children is connected to the very real and inevitable loss of innocence that we all must eventually face in life. By presenting these anxieties in horrifying and heightened ways, the genre is able to amplify our own concerns about our connections to the world around us, not to mention our own mortality. When our childlike innocence dies, we can no longer ignore the presence of evil in the world. As such, in horror movies, sometimes when a child dies, it becomes that evil. Ultimately, creepy children and killer kids are a time-honored and continued trope in the world of horror because they speak to our most base level of fears of how anything good can be corrupted, and even the most pure of things can go bad. There's just something frightfully fun about seeing adults get theirs at the hands of pint-sized terrors. If anything, it'll make you think twice before being too harsh about sending your kids to bed early or making them do their chores, because you never quite know just how they'll respond. 
For all the latest episodes, subscribe to Gamma Ray and make sure to tell us your favorite kids of horror in the comments. I'm Suzanne Kiley, and this is Dissecting Fear.